Hi everyone, welcome back to week six for PSTAT 5A at UCSB. We are continuing to work with inference on a population mean, and today we're going to be working through the steps of a hypothesis test, and specifically what you're going to look at for PSTAT 5A. So let's read through this, and we'll highlight key words and terms that hopefully will help you set up a hypothesis testing example here. So I'm going to read through. It says, U.S. Census Bureau claims that in 2018, the mean income for U.S. households was at least $72,000. Now, there's a lot of information to unpack here. So I'm going to key in on the phrase claim because that will identify what is the point of this test. Now, problems don't have to use word claim. Sometimes they can assume something. Sometimes they might guess or they're trying to test, but in general, in 5A, I do see the word claim being used a lot. Now, next up is what's our parameter? Well, the parameter here is mean income for U.S. households, right? So that is mu. And the language there is usually very straightforward. The word mean or the word average will represent that. And then the next part is actually going to identify for us how to set up our hypotheses. The assessor than me was at least 72,000. So what I like to do here is for the parts I underline, I like to just write it out mathematically by translating these words into algebra. So when I write it all out, I have here the mean income, that's mu, is at least, it's greater than, equal to, and then 72,000. And the rule for our class, and in general, is that if you have an equality symbol, then that goes in the null hypothesis. So now I can just go ahead and translate this over here as my null greater than or equal to 72. And I'm going to report that that is my claim. And then the alternative, the H sub A here, is the counter to the claim, sometimes known as the research hypothesis. And we're going to see, is there any evidence that this is not true? So the opposite, 72,000. And that's our setup. Now, to do all these examples, we have to have data. So I'm going to now continue reading and pick apart, well, what's the data we're going to use to test this? So now we have a random survey of 35 households. So that is N, that's our sample size. Had a mean income of 68,500. Now the problem uses the word mean again, and now I have to differentiate. Is this the mean for the entire population or is this just the mean of the sample? And since it says it came from the survey of 35, I know that's the mean of the sample. So that symbol is X bar. And here are some assumptions. We're gonna assume that incomes are normal with standard deviation of 15,000. Now, since this is an assumption that says the standard deviation, then that's telling me the standard deviation $15,000 did not come from my sample, but that's the assumption. So that's going to make that symbol sigma. So now what's the point of analyzing this? The point is to determine, well, I have a test I'm trying to conduct. And let me highlight it here in this yellow box. And I'd like to find out if the data is going to allow me to conclude one of these things. And so by examining the data that I have that we just wrote out, I can determine what's the appropriate test. So what we have is we have normality. Let me write that better. And I know that sigma is given. So what this is telling me is that I'm going to conduct a z-test. OK, so next up for us is to calculate a p-value. And the p-value is the probability that we're going to use to actually make a decision. So you see in the last part of the problem, it says, 
perform a hypothesis test using a 5% level of significance. That's in essence telling us, well, how sensitive is the test going to be? And this p-value, this probability is going to help us. And so according to lecture, the p-value here is the probability that our sampling distribution, so that's capital X bar, is at most what our data says, so our data is 68,500. I'm going to pause here and highlight that this direction going less than is a result of our HA, right? So this direction right here is because HA is using the less than sign. Had HA used the greater than sign, then I would want the area to the right of the 68,500. So this is my p-value, so it's a probability. And like we've been doing in the previous chapters, we've been using an appropriate distribution to find probabilities. And so in chapter five, you learned that the sampling distribution of X bar was normal. So that means I'm gonna standardize the X bar to a Z. So how I do that is my standardizing equation. So I take my value when I standardize, subtract the mean that I'm assuming here, and then divide by standard deviation over radical n. Right, and that's nothing more than just the standardizing equation for x bar that you went over in unit five. Now, the reason I'm using the 72,000 as mu is the underlying assumption for all hypothesis testing is that we assume the null hypothesis to be true. Right, so for us to compare results, we have to have a baseline um, agreement on well, what's true. And so the philosophy is such that the null is true, and then we base everything off of that to see if there's any evidence that goes against it. And so from here, I just work through a little bit of arithmetic. So if I punch all this in my calculator, it gives me a Z value that is negative 1.38. And as the Z value, I can go to my standard normal table and just look this up now. So if I look up negative 1.38, I want the area to the left. I get a P value that is reported to be 0.838. All right, so what do we do with that? Well, now we make our decision and you have a rule. And the rule simply says, if your P value is really, really, really small, then that's gonna have you favoring the alternative, otherwise you're gonna go with the status quo that is the null hypothesis. Well, how do I know what's really small? Well, that's the point of this significance level. So the significance level right here in this yellow box is the symbol alpha. And so the rule is since our p-value 0.0838 is larger than our alpha, we fail to reject the null, okay? And that's the decision we're going with. So what does that mean? If you look at the null on alternative, the null assumes that the average income for U.S. households is at least $72,000, and this is in 2018. We have an alternative that says the opposite, well, maybe it's under. Now, in our sample, again, we only sampled 35 households out of the millions of households in the U.S., the sample suggests that it's a little bit less. So it kind of looks like if I just look at the number 68,500, then it looks like it favors the alternative. But we also learned from previous chapters that samples are sensitive to just random variation. And so the point of the test is to see, well, is it random enough, far away enough from the middle of the bell curve for me to go with the alternative? Or is it within my normal variation? And so by failing to reject the null, we're saying it's really not far enough that we would support the alternative in this case. And that is it.